Right, so it's finally time to start filling the doors. It's been a long journey on these. Um, but I've got a high spot right here. It needs to be shrunk. Got one right here. Of course, when you start welding on stuff, almost always you're going to have something. This is all roughed in. Just need to fill all this edge. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this. I'm going to go ahead and start filling that, the bulkhead. I'm going to get some of that stuff done. So I'll let you guys take a look at some of that stuff as it gets completed. But I'll put this uh, video on hyperlapse real quick so you can see the progress here. Kind of how it's done. Maybe it'll help you uh, learn how to do your own. Your own. And uh, let's see if we can get this thing filled up and looking good. Uh, but I've first got to shrink it. I'll do that in hyperlapse. I'll do all the shrinking and uh, the filling in hyperlapse so putting the bondo I'll bring you guys back in when I see something interesting keep watching
I'm going to use uh, 40 grit. Knock them down real quick. I'm going to cut this off with just a little bit of 40 for a second on the polisher. 40 is kind of dull that I have. You don't really have to do that with this filler. This is uh, AutoArt Euro Gold. It's tipped over down there. Um, but uh, what I was telling you that, if you want to buy some of that, that's available in Riverside at um, One Stop Auto Body Supplies. They have a good, pretty good prices. They also have the one the auto art uh, base coats, which are really good, uh, good high quality base coats that are a lot less expensive than like BSF, BASF or um, you know those types of finishes, and the same quality in my opinion, really good quality and inexpensive as compared to PPG and BASF. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and send that off, and then I'll just use that real quick, and then I'm gonna switch over to the DA. And uh, the DA, I'm going to go with 60. Um, this, and I'm just going to knock it down a little bit, and then I'll finish out with 150. Uh, it really won't take me very long time to sand this. This stuff sands super, super fast. It's almost like drywall mud. Um, so, but you don't really have to use this. But I just do it just to cut it really, just to knock off that real quick top.
right, so you might think there's a there's a shadow going across there. So if you think there's a giant wave there, it's not wave, it's actually this lighting. But um, yeah, there's a little bit of stuff going on. Of course, you know, I'm going to tell you guys this as uh, a lot of people think different on this. Um, when I was younger, I used to sit there and I would block my Bondo and finish it and make it look fine so that when I primed it, it would look perfect. And then I would just do my blocking. And I found it over the years that that's not entirely necessary. Uh, the best way to do it, if you're trying to do a like quick daily driver, is to just get it to primer as quick as you can. And then put your guide coat on, which is what we got over here. Just like this. You just fog. I just use black paint and just fog it on there. And then you sand that. And then what happens is it makes it a lot easier to find the final stuff. Because what you'll be doing is you spend too much time trying to work and work and work trying to find something you can't see very good and it actually just comes out really easily with the primer so these are actually fairly straight there's a little bit you can see this mapping going on that's from the filler uh, look inside here that's just a, a crash coat of filler on there and bomb it with the sander for a couple minutes not really trying to make that look super cherry again this is before blocking. So after you block it, then you're gonna do a lot more to it with your block. With your, that's where your, your real work is on the blocking. So the quicker you can get to blocking, and actually you can see the shrinks I had to do on that monster. But um, yeah, once you shrink this, you shrink these flat metal and you're gonna have, it just starts rippling right away. So. To expect that if you're going to be doing shrinking but um you know the quicker you get to the blocking part then you can start really straightening it out and making it look really good so uh some guys will you know argue with that they'll say that you know you can do a better job with filling that's up to you but i'm just saying that i learned that for myself i learned out that i can get to blocking faster and then i can straighten everything out from there because with the products they have today, they have stuff you can put over the primer. You know, they have fillers you can put over the primer. They have a glazing, like this stuff I put on. This is actually the glazing. You know, I had a, lot, a last minute spot there. I saw a dent and I filled, I threw some, that's actually just, I just, just uh, run the filler on there and I went over it with the primer. And I'll just uh, go ahead and sand that out when I get time for the next project. And uh, you know, some waves going on. You can see this is actually the feather edge. So a lot of that stuff you'll think, you know, you're looking at waves, but you're looking at like things like feather edging. And even the feather edge will cause a wave probably as bad or worse than Bondo or filler. So, you know, uh, all I can say is if you're new at it, you know, or you're just trying to do your own and you've never really done it before, um, you know, do try and get it straight. But don't spend too much time over and over and over and trying to work something in, and then finally um, going to uh, try to get it to, uh, you know, try and get it so perfect and then prime it. Remember, your primer is going to be part of your filling process. And if you're using a surfacer, that's the way to do it. That's the way I've done it, you know, for many years. And I stopped doing all that stuff many years ago and it saves me a lot more time. And, uh, you know, it's just stuff I learned when I was in my teens. So, you know, get to the guide coat. That's going to help you out a lot more. Some guys will agree. Some guys will disagree. Um, it's up to you. But the quicker you get to this, that's when you can actually really straighten things out. You can you can sand that down, and, you, and you'll see every low spot in it in, in seconds. And then you're not guessing. You're just looking at it. You're before you're kind of feeling you i think i feel a low spot right here oh, okay i think i feel a low spot when you got this you you sand it and you see and feel the low spot at the same time so or high spot or whatever you tap them down you know work on it and then do your final stuff with the guide coat so it's a lot easier that's what i do anyway i'll talk to you guys in the next video and uh please like share and subscribe of course of course there's some runs in this this is First coat, this is not blocked, this is not finished, this is not, none of these things are finished, this is not finished. 
This is just first cut of primer. It's got to get guide coat, got to get blocking, it's got to get glazing, wherever I feel, see spots I need to repair, and then the final stuff gets done. So you're not looking at what's finished. Um, see, I even didn't finish down here. So I'll just use glazing to fill that and glazing to fill this right here, this little edge here. Some of the little stuff I'll just catch with the glazing coat because it's very, very, very small amounts of filler. So it won't peel off or crack or fall off or anything like that. All right, I'll talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.